Hola de nuevo por aquí. Bueno, esta vez sí, esta vez he cumplido lo que he dicho esta mañana. Voy a intentar transmitir un ratillo. Seguir con la aventura gráfica de libro de los cuentos no escritos. Segunda parte. Eso sí, a ver si consigo que se vea. consigo verlo en la tablet, que esta vez sí que he mandado o sea, el lector de calidad, para variar. Vale, creo que se ve. Bueno, a ver, no me había quedado, esa es otra. This symbol's on the bottom of the mirror bowl in the garden. No idea what it means. That's mother's area of expertise. This symbol's on the This symbol's on the bottom of the mirror Only priestesses are allowed to get water from the well. Up to now, my mother hasn't tried to make me into a priestess. If I'm lucky, she never will. Vale, no. Digo, a lo mejor tengo que coger agua de aquí, pero sé que no. I can blame mother for a lot of things but not laziness. On the contrary, she does the same work as three people put together, because she doesn't trust anyone to do it as well. Pa doesn't like getting up early. He always says he needs lots of sleep, But he's never said why. Hey, Pa, the day started ages ago. Uh, what? Oh, Ivo, how's my favorite daughter? I'm your only daughter. Oh, that I had a hundred. You are and will remain something very special. The other 99 would be as well, though. <laughs> pa, you're nuts. Isn't it a wonderful day today? Again. Just as the caterpillars cough in the morning dew. Yet, something seems to be troubling you. She locked me up like a small child. Have you argued again? She started it. She loves you. And she only wants the best for me. How can it be best for me if she constantly criticizes me and forces me to do things that I don't want to do? She believes that this will help prepare you for the life that awaits you. I'd just like to decide for myself. I know. Your mother just doesn't understand that because she never had that choice. Mother wants me to marry this Prince Lalilos. I did hear about that. Is that your wish too? All I wish for is for you to be happy. Aha, so I'm not going to marry him. Unfortunately, not all wishes are granted. Oh. You are an elf princess. You will need to marry sooner or later. It's just when and who. I'd rather just leave that to Mother Nature. I wish you could convince Mother of that. 
I fear her faith in your taste of men has been shaken a little since... Well, you know, she wants to prevent your heart being broken again. That's why she is choosing someone that she thinks is right for you. Pa, would you have used the artifact of divine fate, or would you have hidden it like we did? I think that too much power can corrupt any one of us. But you have great powers, and you've never used them for evil. I could have cured diseased woodlands with the artifact, cleaned rivers in the air, and then what? Then I might have chased away the lumberjacks and destroyed the factories of the dwarves. But I could have helped a lot of humans. Things take time, Ivo. If you force change before its time has come, then it won't last. I... Uh, I need to tell you something, Father, but I'm not sure how. You shouldn't worry too much. It's not good for the baby. You know. Has a zebra got stripes? How could it have happened? Why? I don't know. Is that important? It is. I want to know what's happened to me. Then look for the answers, my little bud. How can you be so calm about it? Because I know that everything will be fine in the end. And if it isn't fine? Then it is not the end. If you don't know what the pregnancy's all about, then I'll have to travel to Seastone and ask the Archmage. The fact that I don't know means that you did not get pregnant by natural means. And if something does not conform to the laws of nature, then it must be magic. No one knows more about these things than Alistair. We agree, then. Like snails munching cabbage. Only... Your mother isn't going to permit it. I know, but I'll work on that. Hypothetically, if Cheap Cheap had to transport something heavy through the air, how could I help him do it? You could ask me to give him the necessary strength. <laughs> Which you have just done, have you not? Really? Of course. But the effect would not last long enough to transport you to, uh, let's say, Seastone. He doesn't need to do that. It's just a short distance. All right. Bring me some sunflower seeds. I have a few sunflower seeds. Here. Good. Keep Still. That's it. Just give Cheap Cheap these seeds to eat shortly before he starts on his journey. Thanks. Whatever you did to those sunflower seeds looked like magic to me. Oh no! It was the opposite of magic. Nature. Life. Pure life. And what exactly do you mean by that? Listen to the wind in the willows and the mole and the toad. They know the answer. Enlighten me, Father. Ghosts and demons, deep in prayer, are confusing to those weak in the head. Hmm. I'll need to have a think about that. Enlighten me, Father. Ghosts and demons higher anger the humorless gods. Mm, understood. Enlighten me. The moth and the dandelion... Dancing the tango and farting uncontrollably are a wonderful sight. Hmm. I'll need to have a think about that. I've got quite a lot to think about. Goodbye, little daughter. 
See you later, Father. ¿Te gustaría tener un modelito igual o qué dice? I don't know what I could ask him right now. ¿Dónde estaba el pájaro? Ya no me acuerdo. Ah, vale, aquí. The sunflower seeds feel warm and they're vibrating slightly. As if they were brimming with energy just waiting to be released. Father's changed the sunflower seeds. Well, can you feel anything? Now, don't exaggerate. Okay, okay, here. Oh, I hope it works. But what's he gonna be like when he's super cheap? He's got enough of an exaggerated opinion of himself as it is. Overdoing it a bit. I thought you just wanted to deliver the pot of gold. <laughs> you deserve it. I think Cheap might get used to having superpowers. Any problems on the journey? Good. And the watch just let you pass. Yeah, they trust you. Pues ni idea, no creo. It's really in there, is it? Our hippogriff? Why did the stud put it in there? Couldn't they have just let it fly back with you? You mean it was in the box already? You didn't actually see it? Huh, I'd love to have your trust. Oh well, at least it's pretty lively. Cheap Cheap blind purchased the Hippogriff. His trust in the Aculeus Stud is far greater than his mistrust of humankind's capacity to deceive. Relax, I'm on it. Um, you've still got the receipt, haven't you, Cheap? Poco demasiado rosa, me parece a mí. Um, Cheap? Didn't the hippogriff in the magazine look a bit different to this? Bigger, a bit more griff and a bit less hippo? Is this the effect of the epidemic? Mother said it changed things. And even if this little lump of lard could take off with me on its back, the journey would be over as soon as we get to the border. Without the password, my mother's border watch will shoot us out of the sky. I see. I see.
Mother? Yes, Ivadora. Those symbols on the columns, what do they mean? First your insights concerning your wedding and now an interest in the spiritual. You do surprise me. The three symbols depict the three different forms that water takes. They are important in many rituals. Water that falls from the sky. Water that springs from the earth and water that is bathed by moonlight. Oh. What's all this different forms of water all about then? Not all water is the same, it changes. If it bubbles out of a spring, then it is spring water. Then it turns into stream water, perhaps into river water, and then sometimes later into sea water. The voice of water changes, its soul. And if different forms of water are mixed together... Then you can create water with powerful magical properties. But it's not as easy as you might imagine. Water is constantly changing its form. Rain is water from the sky, but as soon as it lands in a puddle, then it becomes common puddle water. Do you really think that I look fat? You aren't really fat, my darling, but you aren't perfect either. Do I have to be perfect? No one is perfect, but that doesn't stop us striving for it. Once you are happy with yourself, then you become overindulgent. Dissatisfaction can take you far, my darling. Why do you want me to marry this particular prince? Because I think that will be best for you. And if I don't like him? Then you will learn to love him. Why can't I fall in love first and then marry? And what happens if you don't fall in love? You won't ever marry then? Don't be childish, Ivadora. When you married father, how long had you known each other? <laughs> Just a few days. I fell in love with him instantly. He was the wisest and most handsome elf that I had ever met. And if you hadn't loved him, or if perhaps you hadn't even liked him... Then I would have married him anyway. It is the duty of the princess to secure royal succession. Whether she wants it or not? You didn't want to go to school either. Today you can play music, paint, speak a dozen different languages and have realised what a gift education is. Please, just trust me. Sometimes only parents know what's best. Do you know what can be done to fight the epidemic in Seastone? Done? Nothing, my darling. It's a matter for humans. We will only observe. How hard would it be for us to actually help solve a problem for once, instead of waiting for it to solve itself? If Alistair needs my advice, he can ask me, and up to now he has not done that. But... I'm not going to interfere. Hmm... <sighs> That stuff in the moon well, that's water bathed by moonlight, isn't it? Of course it is, my darling. Could I take some of it? It is holy water. We only use it for special occasions. What do you need it for? I'd like to carry out a ritual. I need some water that has been bathed by the moonlight for it. Really? What sort of ritual? Well, I, I want to, um... Well, it's a surprise. Hmm, I don't like surprises, especially not when it concerns magic rituals. What sort of ritual are you planning? Well, it's just, um, really... What do you want to use the water for? Oh, forget it. About the moon water. What do you need it for? I need it for a potion. It's one of the most important ingredients. Really? What sort of potion? Well, 
the moon waters are particularly pure and clean water. I thought that it could form the basis of a beauty potion. Hmm. It is true that this water is purported to have healing powers. I didn't want to trouble you with this, but then I thought, if I'm meant to be looking my best for the prince, then such a potion wouldn't do any harm. Oh, absolutely. Do you have a vessel? May the Moonwell water give you the help you need to become more beautiful, just as it has always helped me. Vale, me faltaría entonces otro tipo de agua. See you later, mother. Don't pull a face like a wilted willow, Ivo. Smile. Right, now water that has been bathed in moonshine. That must mean the water that's come from the moon well. Aha, that's got the second symbol to glow. Es que no sé de dónde sacarla, a ver. Cogido de la cascada, de allí. No sé si de aquí del estanque tal vez. No, en principio no me deja. I think I fished enough today. There are other things to do. Having a good time, I see. What can I do for you? I need a special sort of water arbor. Can you help me? A special sort of water? Now who's been dreaming that stuff up then? Arbor, please help. I need water that spills out of the ground. There, a waterfall. As much water as you want. Oh, it's not that simple. That water's changed. I need water directly out of the earth. You elves always like to make things complicated, don't you? You got a container? There you go. And don't start telling me that this is some kind of snot water or the like. This be tip-top quality groundwater. Should work. Uh, thank you. I have to get on. Don't work too hard. Ar, that I won't. Lo que no me ha quedado claro es de dónde ha sacado el agua. Let's hope that Arba's donation of water that spills from the earth will work. It hasn't really spilled from the earth, but it is groundwater, and it's never seen the sun. Now all the symbols are going. Hello? Are you there? I'm always there. I cast a spell over you single-handedly with no help. Uh, you had help, you just didn't realise it. I... no, I did it by myself. I'm the all seer. I'm telling you, you are wrong. 
Are you really all-knowing? No, but it sounds better than I am the seer who saw more than any other being in the world and yet didn't see all. I did summon you, but I don't really know anything about you. Do you live in the water, or are you the water? No, the water is just a reflective surface. I live on the other side of the mirrors. I see what happens in front of mirrors. To you, they are simple reflections. To me, they are the window through which I view your world. Okay. So you live on the other side of all mirrors. Does that include the one in my bedroom? I can look through any reflective surface. I see all. You do close your eyes, when it's the decent thing to do, right? I see all. Yes, understood. But if someone's undressing in front of their mirror or doing embarrassing things that no one else should see, you do look away, right? I can see into the furthest reaches of the world. I see the good and the bad, the beautiful and the abominable. You saw me giving an imaginary harp concert in front of my mirror. I count that amongst the abominable. And Mother and others summon you to ask your advice. I wouldn't exactly describe it as asking. They know how to reach me via one of the mirrors. They want me to give them information, and if I don't answer, they just stand there and stare at me. So you help them? That is the question, is it not? Do I have an interest in supporting either one or the other side, or would I rather watch a catastrophe unfold? So you'd pour oil onto the fire just because you want to watch the flames? I could, but mostly I restrict myself to watching. I love to see how things develop. I just, I can't abide when things come to a standstill. That's when I'm always tempted to give someone a shove in the right direction. There's talk of an epidemic in Seastone which is spreading. Do you know anything about it? It is not an epidemic. Well, what is it then? It's something that you will get involved with. Can you see into the future? Stories repeat themselves. Other places, other participants, but the course remains the same. Good fights evil. Why am I pregnant? You are pregnant? Should you not know that, you being the nearly all-knowing oracle? I... I didn't see that. When did you get pregnant? I'm asking you. Stupid romance. A woodland glade, a bed in the cornfield, not a mirror in sight. Couldn't you and Nate have done that somewhere else? Done what? Oh, uh, yes. Nothing, nothing at all, princess. I need today's password for the Woodland Realm Border Watch. Do you know it? Of course. Your mother told the commander of the guards when she was standing next to the mirror surface of the moon well. Can I have it? <laughs> Absolutely. I want to see how this develops. And there are quite a few surprises awaiting you in Seastone. Which, of course, you're not going to tell me about. Uh, they wouldn't be surprises if I told you about. By any chance, is the password Melon? Uh, how do you know that? Stories repeat themselves. Do you not know that? Thanks for that uh, unsettling conversation. I have to go. Yes, you must. Yes, but I didn't mean that. You will seek me out before this story ends. You mean to say you will see me and follow my every move? Yes, you will want to help a friend in need and won't know how to. Really? That's when you will seek and find me. In a flying town, in a house with no corners. Where will I find you? 
Till then, Princess Ivo of the Woodland Realm. But we will see each other again soon. But, oh... Vale, ahora se supone que ya puedo salir de aquí, ¿no? You are strong enough, aren't you? You were able to demolish that box just now. Can you carry me as far as Sea Stone? Right then. The Archmage? Murdered? By Wilbur Weathervane? There's something strange afoot, Cheap. Mark my words. I don't believe a word of it. Someone's responsible for this epidemic and someone wants to hurt our friends. Away to Sea Stone. My name is Weathervane, Professor Weathervane. You want to teach us? Well, yes. Why not? You're a gnome! Gnomes can't do magic! I can, and have. During my mage training, I... um... yes? My mother also says that you should not be a teacher. But I think you're great, Professor. Oh, thank you. Say, Professor, what exactly is the magic constant? How long must a bear to serum mature? What can you tell us about ancient magic runes? Uh, I, um, I will answer all your questions, but not now. It's time for History of Magic. Then I have a history question. As everyone knows, gnomes are completely incompetent when it comes to magic. To be exact, only one great gnome mage has appeared in the last 800 years. He defeated Grummar, the last of the great dragons. What was the name of that last great gnome mage? He was called, sit down at your desk properly and don't ask stupid questions. But don't they say, there are no stupid questions, only stupid answers? And that there aren't supposed to be any bad students, only bad teachers? Not, not right now. We will... Uh, Oh, open your textbooks to page 100 and... So, I was right, wasn't I? You know nothing, not even the name of the only great maid your own people ever produced. I, um... <clears throat> I, I just need a drink of water. F frog in my, in my throat. Ha! Oh, man! Master Marcus warned me that the students would test me the first few hours, but this is a nightmare. I, 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 I don't know all of these things. I, I know nothing. Ah, 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 e easy, boy. Easy. Think, Wilbur. Think. It looked like this before I ever moved in. Generations of teachers must have left their stuff here. I like it. The school has a history and... When I have time, I'll rummage through it. A few of the crates and boxes are labelled. Hands off. Property of the Half-Blood Prince. Schrodinger. Hmm, that box could hold a dead cat. Or not. Mages use balls like this to communicate over long distances. Master Marcus explained it to me. He'll know how I can tame those unruly students. Master Marcus and the Archmage were so busy rebuilding the city that no one had the opportunity to teach me anything about teaching. 
This box was in a shop window down in the city. I thought it might be useful. After all, there are children with magic wands on it. But unfortunately, it just seems to be a bunch of those tricks. Like that old one with Mr. Wupperman, the top hat and the rabbit. Short white rope, a pair of dice, playing cards, and a guide on how to lead people up the garden path. That's just not right. Real magic or none at all. parchment and old scrolls. Perhaps he'd like the pet food I bought. This has to be the oldest shoe I've ever seen. It's so old it's even lost its ability to stink. That's strange. There's paper in the bottom of the shoe. Ooh, maybe the shoe has a hole and the paper is supposed to protect the wearer from getting wet feet. Hmm, it's a sheet from a book. It's folded in the middle and printed on both sides. That equals four pages. It wasn't torn out. It looks more like the glue weakened and the sheet fell out. I'll just take it with me. A folded sheet from a book. A total of four pages were printed on it. I don't know what kind of book it is, but I should keep my eyes open for more pages. Friedolin might prefer green grass or fresh carrots, but all I could find in the city was this pet food. The entire school building is a bit scary. No one knows exactly where it was the last 20 years. It disappeared overnight and then reappeared just as suddenly once the war ended. There's a lot of magic in these old walls. The stove is always on, for example, and even though I've never put any wood in it. A magical stove is a fine thing in winter, but in the summer, this small room could quickly become sweltering. Ow! That stone is definitely more than just warm. A beautiful golden ear trumpet. One of my predecessors must have laid it up there. A very tall predecessor. The bed is pretty cosy. It's so cosy that Friedlin is curled up in it. But that's okay. Friends share. And he lets me sleep at the foot end. Earlier, in a situation like this, I would have holed up in bed and hoped that everything would somehow take care of itself. But those days are gone. I'm a professor of magic and I have to solve my own problems. The teddy is just, uh, you know, a keepsake and some moral support from home. Soft and cuddly moral support. The bed is pretty cosy. It's so co but that's okay. My wand. The King of Thieves got it for me during my mage training. He and the other rats have been tirelessly helping to rebuild the city in recent months. They work closely with the Archmage, albeit mostly in secret. I still haven't figured out exactly how it works. Sometimes it performs the most amazing magic. Sometimes it can't even perform the simplest of tasks. Archmage Alistair has promised to have a look at it sometime. Maybe it has a loose connection or something. A bowl of fresh, cool water for my roommate. There's no way I'm taking a bowl with me. I mean, how am I supposed to put a bowl of water into my pocket without getting my robe soaking wet? It's not like I can just carry anything around. Hmm, but I could use the bowl here in the room. This is Friedlin, my rabbit sheep. I had to cast the transformation spell during my mage training. And this is the result. I think we make a good team. A young mage and his rabbit sheep fighting side by side as a force for good.
Unfortunately, Friedlin doesn't do much other than lay in bed and eat. I still have to convince him it's important. Okay, we'll do it like this. I'll give you some delicious pet food, and you give me my notebook back. Okay, buddy? <coughs> All right, me first. Okay. Now give me my notebook, please. Hey, I thought we had a deal. Vale, supongo que tengo que encontrar una forma de conseguir el cuaderno, digo yo. I've thought a few times about whether I should try to fully transform Friedlin into a sheep or back into a rabbit. But he seems to be quite happy the way he is. And I'm afraid that I might accidentally transform him into an elephant or a skunk or or a dog. Do you want some water, Friedlin? He seems to be hungry more than anything. Okay, fine. One more time. I give you proper food, and you give me my. Ouch. Okay, fine. And now. You can't always just take it, a friendship, you know. This is my contract, signed by the Archmage. I am the first teacher in the school of witchcraft and wizardry. At least the first since the school reappeared. At first I didn't want to accept. I know almost nothing about magic. But Master Alistair said there are very few mages left, and I had completed mage training faster than anyone else. I was the right person for the job. I wanted to help and learn more about magic, so I agreed. Hopefully that was the right decision. I wouldn't want to disappoint Master Alistair. My whole family stayed in the White Ridge Mountains. Why would they even want to come to Seastone? This isn't their world. Little Sydney can walk now and reach everything that's on the workbenches. That tripled her invention output. Maggie doesn't build battle robots anymore since the war is over. Now she's experimenting with computing machines. But Grandad said there's no future in it. It wasn't easy to tell them I'm not an engineer but a mage instead. Mum said she'd always suspected it. These are the aviator goggles that my granddad gave me before my first trip to Seastone. Well, a pair of aviator goggles. The original pair was lost when granddad fired me out of the cannon. That's when I found out granddad has a whole box of these goggles. Every time he tries to persuade some idiot to do something stupid, he makes a rousing speech and then hands over his old aviator goggles. So, what was that number again? Six, four, seven, three, one? Hello. Ah! Oh, wrong number! I can't remember Master Marcus's number. I had it written in my notebook. Vale, o sea que tengo que conseguir el cuaderno. Va a conseguir el número. Okay, fine. One more time. 
I give you proper food and you give me my... Out! Okay, fine. And now... You can't always just take their friendship, you know? back out there until I know the name of the gnome that defeated the great dragon uh, thingy. My students would lose all respect for me. And how would I teach them anything then? Vale, que no puedo salir de aquí. Así que tengo que resolver esto con lo que tengo. A ver. Tampoco es que tenga mucha cosa. Do you want some water, Friedlin? He seems to be hungry more than anything. I'm not sure Friedlin would prefer this paper to that in my pad. Besides, I might still need the book page for something. Friedelin might pref... Sometimes my wand works perfectly and sometimes less so. I don't quite have the hang of it yet. I've thought a few times about whether I should try to fully... Tr but he seems to be... Well, buddy? What are you eating there? Hey, that's my notepad. I still need that notepad. It has Master Marcus's number. Hmm, maybe I can lure Friedlin away from my notepad. That's it. That's all there is. Hey, Friedlin, look! Food! All you have to do is hop over here and get it. Wow! My rabbit sheep has superpowers. But now the food is gone and Friedlin is still hungry. Ah, no wonder I didn't do it right. It says, space-saving instant dry food. Soak in water before feeding. Ah, crap. I still need that notepad. It has Master Marcus's number. take care of you then maybe we could talk about my notebook <coughs> oops um ah uh, i'll um i'll read the instructions next time promise sorry vale voy a conseguir un orden concreto It says, Master Marcus, only in emergencies, 64179. 
This is definitely an emergency. I'm losing my students' respect before I even had it. Well, six, four, one, seven, and um, nine. Hopefully this will work this time. Yes? Hello? Master Marcus! Wilbur, what is it? Ah, you have to help me, Master Marcus. The students, they're always asking me questions. Of course, you're their teacher. But I don't know the answers. I've only been a teacher for a few days and I'm all alone. And the school is eerie and there's no textbooks and no one wants to learn anything and... Wilbur, no one expects you to be the perfect teacher right away. Wake your students' enthusiasm for magic. That would be a good start. Why do I have to teach you all alone? Why aren't there any other teachers? Many majors died during the war. There are only a few of us left. And most of those who survived are now pursuing more lucrative activities. Alchemy, ghost hunting, children's birthday parties. But, but training new mages is important. If the rest are just out for the gold, then who will take care of the next generation? Being a teacher is an important and honorable task, Wilbur, even when others fail to appreciate that. You said I should inspire my students, but how am I supposed to do that? I don't know anything about the history of magic. Obviously not, otherwise you would know that you'll never attract anyone with that subject. But it's in the curriculum. Oh, bugger the curriculum. Do what you're good at. Cast spells. Fill them with wonder. Make them want to be able to do the same. But, but I, I don't know how. Wilbur, you conjured a sheep out of a hat and you didn't know how to do that either. Go out there and knock them dead. Let the magic do the work. You may not know what you're doing, but you're doing it. Just do some magic? Just do some magic. You trained me. Why aren't you teaching at the school with me? Ah, uh, politics. My brother is the Archmage, and he's in the middle of an election campaign. If he were to give his own brother a job, well, his opponents would just love that. But I'm not angry. I did my part. I trained mages when no one else would. And I found the most talented gnome mage the world has ever seen. Your brother called me a natural talent. I am really quite good at magic, right? You did some incredible things during your training. I just wish I could control the magic better. Sometimes it just bubbles out of me, and other times, nothing. Mm, I think that will come with time. And if not, you will have to rely on your ingenuity. Apparently there was a powerful gnome mage a long time ago. Did he kill any dragons? According to legend, the last of the great dragons, Gremma, was defeated by a gnome. That's the one I mean. What, what was that gnome's name? No one knows. He arrived at a time of great need and saved the people of the Southlands by accomplishing the impossible. Then he disappeared without a trace. Wow! But one of my students asked me for his name. Then he probably wanted to lead you up the garden path. Some students want to find your weaknesses and see how far they can go. Don't take any guff. Thanks for your help, Master Marcus. I'll get through the lesson one way or another, and now I'll get back in touch, OK? Ah, uh, sorry, but no, Wilbur. You caught me packing. I'm off to spend two exciting weeks with a couple of friends. What, you... you got on vacation? Well, now? Maybe it's more than just a holiday. I sold the mage school, as you know. I want to start something new. Finally do what I really want to do. Role-playing games. Role-playing games? Live role-playing games. They start in a few days. We leave the normal world of magic, monsters and dungeons behind and immerse ourselves in a fantasy world. I play a removals contractor who is caught in a traffic jam with his truck and must therefore spend a night in a motel. Can you imagine what adventures could be waiting there for me? But uh, I thought being a teacher was really important. 
bet it is. Have fun. And Marcus. Hello. Eso, un momento voy a bajar la música. Me ha recordado un poco a lo que salía en el Simon de Sorcerer 2, ¿no? Como era el juego de rol ese contable, fincas y contables o algo así. Come on, Wilbur. You can do it. You can inspire your students. That's better. So what about the magic runes? No one knows the name of the gnome that defeated Grandma. Nice try. Feet off the desk, or I'll make it bite them off. Enough with history of magic. Let's cast some spells. Fairy games doesn't sound bad, right? Impossible. Not bad, eh? Wow. That is magic. And here you can learn how to control it. That's it for today. Tomorrow we'll do... Something else. Ah! Oh, sorry, honey. Get rid of that, will you? I need a word with Mr. Weathervane. Mr. Weathervane. Nice to finally meet you in person. And you are? <laughs> How very precious. I rather thought it'd be wise to watch out for you, Mr. Weathervane. Um, why watch out for me? You only play the innocent little country yokel. I always knew that. Your patron, Archmage Alistair, will not win the election against me. Did you know that we're only three points behind him in the latest polls? Um, no, I, I wasn't aware of that. You shouldn't have just shot my fairy! <laughs> Do not underestimate me, Mr Weathervane. I am very well aware that those are not fairies. Cobalus Vagastus, flying kobolds. Don't tell me you conjured them up yourself. Yes, I did. All five of them. Amazing. Powerful magic is needed to manifest living creatures. That is why most necromancers only reanimate skeletons. Dead matter can be much more easily controlled, as of course you know. Or should know. How may I help you? Help me? Huh. One of the Archmage's top men wants to help me. <laughs> you know how the game is played, don't you, Withervane? What what game? Things are heating up. The house of cards is starting to collapse. I know it, and Alistair knows it too. We both lie low, waiting for the other to make a mistake. And he has made the first. I'd rather play solitaire, or can I just watch? Huh, well said, Weathervane. This time, there can be no spectators. Everyone is either for us or against us. This time, it's about the future of this town and the entire country. What mistake did the Archmage make? He hired you. A gnome with a fake diploma issued by none other than the Archmage's brother, Marcus. I earned my diploma, honestly. I have passed all three of the exams and... Gnomes know nothing of magic. Everyone knows that. And you've never taught before. But, but Archmage Alistair believes in me. 
As the head mage, he appoints the professors. But I'm the merchant council leader and I assign the administrative posts. Headmaster Block will reveal your incompetence and the newspapers will report on the Archmage's dubious personnel policy before the election. The new Headmaster? Who is he? Horatius Block. A good man. Very correct and very strict. If, if he can help this school return to its former glory, I look forward to working with him. Former glory? This old ruin, it was already run down back in my day. And wherever it was for the last 20 years, it definitely looks like they didn't have any cleaners. My friend, Archmage Alistair, is better suited to bring the city and the country back into shape than anyone else. Oh, you believe that? He is a great mage. Anyone who doubts that is mad. And he was a great leader during the war, most of the time. But what we need now is someone who understands the economy. And that's you? I am a rich and successful merchant. I have rich and successful friends. Who could be better suited to making others rich and successful? Alistair would step down for you if he believed that. You know what? I actually believe you're right. Strange, isn't it? How little he worries about defending his power. So I guess it's all been said, hasn't it? Indeed. You're on a sinking ship, Witherbane. But I could still be convinced to throw you a life preserver. I trust the Archmage. Then, Mr. Weathervane, you shall perish with him. Here, elect Sybil Van Buren. She knows how to get it done. Come along, honey. We're leaving. There aren't any of these in my book of fairy tales, Mama. I know, honey. Who wants to look at something that ugly? Can you turn him into a unicorn? Or the Cheshire Cat? Or the Frog Prince? I don't think the Archmage even has brochures like these. No posters or town criers or plays. Either he lacks the gold or he doesn't want to conduct his election campaign in this manner. I don't know exactly why the council leader left the brochures lying here. It was agreed that children can't vote. First they wanted to base eligibility to vote on size, which of course led a resistance among us gnomes and the dwarves. And then they said weight should be decisive, the more you weigh, the more weighty your vote, but then the trolls and ogres would have been overrepresented. In the end, they agreed on a minimum age. However, there are still arguments because rats, undead children and other minorities can never vote. This is the desk that Chantal, the daughter of the council leader and little Timmy share. Hard to imagine two students being any more different. Chantal is only here because of its tradition in her family, and I don't think she really cares about magic or has any real talent for it. Timmy, though, well, he is eager to learn and was so excited the last few days. It's for students like him that we have to get this school back up and running. Mmm, a pencil case. A ruler. Nothing special. I don't know who that boy was. He was a right pain in the ass. However, he seemed to understand a great deal about magic. And if I managed to teach him some manners, he could be an excellent student. Hmm. Generations of students have left their mark, especially in the form of little pictures and sayings carved into wood. Here's a particularly long one. For all drifters and troublemakers, Condemned to write the same sentence on the board over and over again? No problem. Cast the automation spell on the piece of chalk and it does it all the work for you. Bartholomus. Hey, aye, that's cheating. Pretty clever, though. The spell carved into wood down there. I'll just write it down. Why work when you can do magic? The automation spell. Chantal forgot her book. Seems to be a book of fairy tales, but one of the tackier kinds. 
My dad used to read me fairy tales when I was a kid. The bloodthirstiest, most cruel, creepy, proper fairy tales. I'll just leave it there. Chantel can take it tomorrow. My dad used to read proper. I'll just leave it there. I suspect that some sort of strange magical creatures were kept in the cages. Students, for example. The little fellas look like they've got nothing but mischief in mind. I hope they don't get into too much trouble. They're ugly, but I summoned them. Therefore, there is a special bond between us. <coughs> El ruido que ha hecho el cobol. Oh, most of the plants have dried up. No one looked after them. Only this plant must have found a water source somewhere. Perhaps one of the windows has a leak. It gives you hope to know that something beautiful and peaceful has survived in this gloomy building. Ah! Ugh. Se lo comía. Maybe it was always a carnivorous plant, but then again, perhaps it adapted to its new environment to survive. Don't worry, little plant. From now on, I'll take care of you. You won't have to go hungry anymore. Ugh, that's disgusting. Oh, that smells like rotten eggs. Oh, like Grandad whenever he's eating bean soup. The last time a fire burned in this was before the school disappeared 20 years ago. And even if I could, I shouldn't start a fire in it anyway. The flue was broken and the smoke would fill the entire classroom. A ver, un momento. Little ash, but also some unburned waste. Here's a sheet of paper. Another book page. Or more precisely, another folded sheet of paper upon which four pages have been printed. Hmm, when I look at the page numbers on the first sheet and on this sheet, it seems there are at least five sheets missing. Master Marcus's number won't help me anymore. He's probably already on his way to his live role-playing game. Whoever wants to be rich and successful should trust the rich and successful. We know how it's done. Elect Sybil Van Buren. Hmm. Why work when you can do magic? The automation spell. The spell worked excellently. Well, you know, even if the fairies do look a bit strange. I think I've summoned enough of them for now, though. The mixing of potions is an important part of magic. It's a bit like cooking, except a stew doesn't kill you if you add the wrong ingredient. Or if it's stirred wrong. Teachers are traditionally paid in apples. I got this one myself, because I didn't want to spend my first day without an apple.
I wanted to ask the Archmage whether good teachers can expect any other form of payment than apples. But when he showed me the beautiful contract with the seal and all that, it just didn't seem to be the right time to talk about gold. Sometimes my wand works perfectly and some... It didn't let me down this time though. It worked even better than I expected. It was like it wanted to conjure. I could hardly keep it under control. Ooh, crazy drawings and symbols. That must be really high magic. Only the wisest mages can understand all that. Hmm, unusual. This device looks more like ordinary engineering than it does magic. Eh, most magical devices have lots of golden parts, elaborate decorations and bells and whistles, just the way the mages like them. This one could easily come from a gnome workshop. What does it say? The apparatus that corrupted student Allardyce. A warning to those who do not want to accept the limits of magic. Hmm. Introduction to magic, sheep breeding and care, statistics. Hmm, that seems to be some kind of timetable. Well, as long as I'm the only teacher, most of these subjects won't get taught. When the school disappeared 20 years ago, obviously no one looked after the animals. Expected consequences, really. I don't need the whole skeleton, but a sharp pointed bone like this might just prove useful. It appears they wanted to replicate the fish's natural habitat as exactly as possible, including miniature treasure chests, just like the ones frequently found in the sea. Hey, some old coins. Maybe one of my predecessors had a vicious fish guard his retirement fund. few old coins. They must have been underwater for a long time. You can hardly see the detail. That's a small bone from the fish in a glass jar. It's very sharp and has a kind of a hook at the end. I'm gonna hold my nose. That gas smells like, like, well, you know, gas. Luckily, that stinky cloud of gas is short-lived and quickly vanishes. Luckily, that stinky... Probably will have to take the gas in some way. I'm going. No. With a little luck, I can get through the day without causing an explosion. Archmage! Remy! If it isn't our newest professor. How was your first class, Wilbur? Great! I conjured up a few cobbles and the students loved it. Ah, well done. That's the right thing to do. You've already pretty much won the battle, Wilbur. Once they want to learn, they will. What brings you to the school? 
I wanted to pay Horatius Bloch, the new headmaster, a first visit and see how the school's doing. That's very nice of you. But don't you have more important things to do? Well, it's my old school. I once walked these halls as a child myself. What the Archmage doesn't want to tell you is that something is wrong here. For a few days she has sensed the presence of something evil. What do you mean you sense something evil? Everything we do and think leaves a trace. You know how you sometimes shudder when you enter a place where great evil has been done? Dark magic leaves a particularly strong trace. Like a bad smell. And it smells like dark magic around here? I first felt it a few days ago. First in the lower town, then in the upper town. And now here, at the school. Where did it come from? I mean, do you know who's responsible? I don't. The trace dissipates. There is too much wild magic in the air here at the school. We must keep our eyes open at all times. Good detective work will serve us better in this case than some hocus pocus. So, so what's he like, the new headmaster? He's no mage, that's for certain. He is an agent of the council leader. First and foremost, he is a reliable official with principles, Remy. The council leader of the merchants did appoint him, and he may advocate her policies. Yet I do not believe he will conspire against us. He is stern, but upright. Did you see the way he looked at me? Like I was vermin? No, I tell you. The council leader has hired him for one reason and one reason only. He is supposed to make life difficult for our Wilbur here. Am I being set up to fail so they can put the blame on you, Archmage? Ah, if that's their plan, then they have already lost. The council chairman was here. She picked up her daughter from my class. Ah, terrible person. She has great influence, and she has friends in high places. She could also use her influence to do good, too. So why is she trying to bring you down? She believes that that would be a good thing, Wilbur. Almost no one wants to do evil. There are just very different views on what is evil and what is good. How's the campaign coming along? I hope we're winning. We're still in the lead. But our margin is shrinking. Van Buren's big wig cronies are throwing tons of gold into her election campaign. How are things in the town? Have things calmed down? Not really. The barricades are getting higher and the camp is getting larger. People are getting impatient, and who could blame them? The war is over, yet everyone is doing worse and worse. But you're doing your best, Archmage. It takes time, Wilbur. The deeper the wounds, the longer they need to heal. And nothing causes deeper wounds than war. We must deliver results. Most still trust Alistair, but the mood could swing. Then we would not only lose the election, we would have a riot on our hands. I think I'll go see the Headmaster. Goodbye, Archmage. Bye, Remy. Goodbye, Wilbur. Don't let them intimidate you. I'll do my best, and I won't give up. I know. You go on ahead, I'll be along in a minute. I want to talk to you in private, Wilbur. There are problems. That bit about dark magic all over the city does not sound good. It's not just that. I think the Archmage's life is in danger. What? There was an attack, or there may have been one. Alistair and Sissi was a coincidence, but how often do heavy gargoyles just break off the mage tower when he is standing below them? I have assigned as many rats as I can spare to guard him, but you must also keep your eyes open, Wilbur. Me? Not only is something going on in the city, something is happening in the school, too. We need information. We need to find out who is behind all this. I hear Alistair has finally appointed you head of the Secret Service. From King of Thieves to High Public Office, eh? Absolutely. Made quite a stir. It is the first time a rat has ever officially held an official government position. More than a few are of the opinion that with so many humans out of work, rats should not receive any jobs at all. But nobody knows the city like you rats do. You really helped me out during my last adventure. You brought me potion ingredients and my fantastic magic wand. 
and you save Timmy and my entire clan from starvation. We'll never forget that, Wilbur Weathervane. Timmy was a great help during my first lesson this morning. Yes, he has done well. He absolutely wants to be a mage, just like his role model. Just like the Archmage? No, just like the hero of the Black Tower. For Timmy and many others, you are one of the heroes who ended the war. Oh, me? Then, then it's best I talk to the Headmaster and ask him what I should do for him. Whatever it is, just do it and act inconspicuous. But keep your eyes open for anything unusual while you do so. Well, things that look unusual even in an enchanted mage school. Uh, got it. Why don't we meet down at the inn after work? Then we can exchange news. Oh, I just hope Headmaster Block doesn't keep me busy all night. Oh, you'll be fine. You defeated the Shadow Army, never forget that. Yeah, just... back then I wasn't alone. The school looked terrible when it reappeared. It took days before we could move freely on the ground floor. Don't even want to think about upstairs. I'd love to know what's on the upper floors, but it's far too dangerous. A magical building that's been left on its own for two decades has magic seeping through the walls. Could be lethal. When you summon creatures, I've read that you don't really create them. You just call them from somewhere else. I don't know where the cobbles came from, but they don't give me the impression they want to go back there soon. If I was as big as a troll, I could maybe reach it. If... The school's not in the best condition, but at least there's a public mage school in Seastone again. And now we will gradually reclaim the building, and I will help train a new generation of mages. We will tidy the classrooms, we will tidy the halls, we will tidy the stairwells, we will never surrender. When I first arrived at the school a few days ago, I got a real fright when I first saw it. I mean, I knew about armor from books, but if you imagine that there's a real person inside, and has been for decades, ew. That's silly. Whoever's in the armor would have died a long time ago. Unless it's a ghost. Ooh. Maybe the tapestry shows who the knight served. I don't know much about these things, unfortunately. We didn't have knights in the White Ridge Mountains. Probably they sank in the snow. The tapestry is in a miserable condition, like everything here. The colours are faded and... Hey, there's even a loose thread. The tapestry seems to be magic. At first the thread was very short, but now it's at least four paces long. I'll rip it off and take it with me. You can never have enough magic thread. I thought accumulate items in the inventory. No idea what it does. A lever. No idea what it does. Ni idea de si ha pasado algo. Eh, the school's not in the best condition. The worst of the rubbish has been disposed of, but it will still take weeks before everything is clean and tidy. Wow, this isn't dust and dirt. It's like the funk of 40,000 years. It's rock art. As if thousands of feet have trampled it into the floor. Even though no one's been here for 20 years. Or at least as far as I know. We carried loads of rubbish out of the school. I guess we must have overseen those. I'll take them with me. Done is done.
No, sí, Zara, no me he perdido. Estoy haciendo recopilación de ítems, simplemente. I don't think I'd hit him. I'm not a very good shot with the magic wand. That cobalt seems pretty adventurous. He was the first to slip out of the classroom and now he's just buzzing around. What's this? Another book page. I'll take it with me. Headmaster Block. Ah, Professor Weathervey. There you are at last. I have some tasks for you. I look forward to us working together. I'll be frank, Professor Weathervane. You have a mage diploma, but have not completed the tests required in order to work as a teacher. Attested credentials? A written application? Nothing. You are only here on the Archmage's recommendation. That's right! But there's currently a shortage of mages, and everyone must do their best. Do their best is well and good. But it does not replace the formal and mandatory training for teachers of higher magic. I may have no formal training as a teacher, but I managed to thrill my students in the very first hour. I performed a spell, and you could really see the way they caught fire. Not literally, of course. It wasn't a fire spell or anything of that sort. You performed a spell? Yes. And now they want to learn to do the same. They want to learn. According to my records, history of magic was on the syllabus. Yes, but... <laughs> Professor Weathervane, Crucial to our success in teaching is that we provide students with a stable, reliable framework and adhere to the curriculum exactly. Yes, but the students... Had you enjoyed proper training, you would have known that. I will note this failure in your file, and in the future you will stick to the curriculum, dear colleague. But the Archmage Alistair trusts me to teach here at the school. Well, yes. Mages have a well-known penchant for chaos. I'm still trying to get an overview. The records management in this school defies description. Council Leader Van Buren wants to reorganize this educational institution and finally bring structure into the place, and she has my full support. Correct management of the teaching records must once again become the teaching staff's primary task. That is the only possible way to institute efficient control of learning and teaching methods. You support the council leader in the election, right? Indeed I do. We need to build up an extensive bureaucracy and boost the economy as quickly as possible. To me, the council leader appears to be a more logical choice than a mage. But do not worry, Weathervane. I don't blame you for your political naivete. As a school headmaster, I am neutral and always act according to school rules. And of course, political influence in schools is prohibited. Tell that to Council Leader Van Buren. What's that? Oh, it's one of the campaign brochures the Council Leader put in my classroom. Hmm. I'll, um, I'll take care of it. You, you, you mentioned tasks earlier, Headmaster? Yes, you have two tasks. As you know, the Archmage is coming early tomorrow to officially inaugurate the school. 
important political and business personages will be attending. And as you can assumedly see, the school is not in a presentable condition. Council Leader Van Buren has hired a caretaker, but he cannot do the work alone. Your tasks are to help him clean the floor in the entrance hall and remove the cobwebs by tomorrow. You want me to sweep the hall and get rid of the cobwebs? Is that really my job as a teacher? Yes, indeed. A school is a team endeavor, so that means you have to do what I tell you. If, if you told me to get rid of the flying cobwebs, that I would have understood. What did you say? Flying cobwebs? Uh... If there are flying cobbles infesting the place, they must be got rid of too. See to it, Weathervane. Floor, cobwebs, flying cobbles, fix them. Huh. And apart from cleaning, what else is there to do? The inventory has revealed that a number of items of school property have gone missing. Among other things, the school library. The whole library has gone missing? That is correct. I asked the Archmage about the matter, and he confirmed to me that the room was there before. He does not know where it is now. He said something about its being in hiding, perhaps, or away traveling. I think it's unseemly. I want that room. We are a school, and we need a library. Agreed. But where should I start looking? That I cannot tell you. You are the mage. You ask a lot. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if I can get all this done by tomorrow morning. By tomorrow morning? You have until 72 o'clock. 72 o'clock? I have developed my own efficient metric system of measuring time. A day has a hundred hours, consisting of a hundred minutes, with a hundred seconds each. Everything else is too confusing. So, um, I don't even have until tomorrow morning? For a properly qualified teacher, even the impossible poses no problem. Or should I note in your file that you do not feel up to the tasks assigned you? No, I'll... Oh, I'll do it. Very good. And then you can call it a day and prepare tomorrow's lessons. One thing's clear. Headmaster Block wants me to fail. But I won't disappoint the Archmage. And secondly, I like this school. And a school library would be great for the students. And third, the work the headmaster has given me is the perfect opportunity to keep my eyes open for Remy. Is he working for the school or himself? Or is he only interested in gaining the council leader an advantage in the election? Display case documenting the achievements of pupils of the school. Some sports trophies, pictures of slain dragons, pupils in front of smouldering pots. Mm, pride of place seems to go to a trophy won in a broom ball tournament. Broom ball originally went by a different name. It was played on broomsticks using six winged balls. But there were legal complications. That's why it today resembles nothing more than soccer, except that each player has a broom strapped to their back. The display case can't be opened like that. It's locked. What an impressive fireplace. If it were lit, it would be warm in here in no time. What an impress what an impressive fireplace. A nice pair of bellows. They really get a fire going. When my family wanted to forge something at home, I was in charge of the bellows. You are the most important gnome in this matter, they often used to say to me. It says, Fireplace Travel Network Map. It shows a lot of fat black dots connected by lines. Above each of the dots is a name. Sea Stone, Mage Tower, Entrance Hall, coaching in Fox's Den uh, and many more, three animal symbols are located beneath each of the dots. 
I've heard about this. Wizards use a powder to travel through the fire in one fireplace to the fire in another. Of course, this doesn't just work with any fireplace. It must be on the fireplace travel network. And this plan shows which fireplaces are connected to which. One of the dots is circled in black ink. Sea stone, mage school, staff room, that's this fireplace. A few lines lead away from the... Oh, there seems to be two other fireplaces here in the building itself. Sea stone, mage school, astronomer con, and... Hey, sea stone, mage school, library. If this fireplace is connected to the library fireplace, I might be able to use it to get in there. This must be the best clock in the world. Most only have two or three hands. This one has at least ten. I don't really know what the clock wants to tell me, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't just show the time. There's so much to discover. I wish I could stay here forever. Together with some fireplace travel powder, this fireplace could be my ticket to the library. A neat pile of firewood. More than enough to make a decent fire. It's really cold in here. I'm gonna light a small fire, okay? Do you intend to burn school property? No, I'm... there's some firewood right here. Yes, and it belongs to the school. Oh! Sure. Mejor el trozo de madera que llevo aquí. I hope that is not school property that you intend to burn there, Professor Weathervane. Uh, no. No. Well, is it school property or not? Vale, no. Tengo que buscar madera en otro sitio. Oh, how pretty. A swan folded from a piece of paper. This is origami, an ancient elf art form. The dwarven word for this art form means something like pointy ears build dust catchers out of paper because they can't deal with stone. This isn't just some sheet of paper, it's... Sorry, Swan. It is! Another book page. I'll take it with me. Still missing a few pages, but if I'm lucky, I'll find them all. I can save a book. Bernison, troll. Bernison of High Wind Lake managed to collapse the south wing of the school by sneezing. Yoda Green Gnome. Magic strong in this one is, but weak his grammar be. Fluffy Fofofof. Fluffy transformed pure gold into a tasty piece of bread, so refuting the old saying that you cannot eat gold. Lenart the Akagamic. Lenart the Akagamic. Genius of the buttons, mage of the keys, has broken more brains than hearts. Most recently his own brain, which earned him a private suite in the Arkhamstein Asylum. 
Levin from the hills. Gifted fire and water mage. Unfortunately, his talents cancel each other out, so he's regarded as one of the most incompetent mages in his class. Marcel makes a lot. Marcel summons large hairy mammals and refuses to stop doing so. Marco tit Marco intentionally uses words like and because he believes it would be too embarrassing to write them down here. Mario Mushroom. Mario jumps on other people's heads, lights them on fire, and then calls the whole thing non-violent. Mark of the Southlands. Lord Mark of the Southlands yesterday set fire to several teachers and flooded the gym. Again. Movi Van Grove. Movi Van Grove transformed the school sheep into an ape. Although, the librarian expressly forbids apes in the school. Those boys reference a Mundo Disco. El bibliotecario prohíbe los moros en la escuela. Omadomadillo. Omadom was expelled. It turned out that he was an armadillo in a penguin suit with a sign that said Moo. Okay, now that's just weird. Allardyce, Albert. He seems to be an excellent student. There are many entries about improper interjections and questions. And what's this? Axel A. Aronson. Axel cannot pay his school fees as he gives all his money to dodgy game developers. Beaverus Deepwood. Beaverus tried to turn wood into gold. In the end, he got mahogany, which in turn he sold for a lot of gold. Brian Blackstone. Brian became the youngest student ever to successfully cast the teleportation spell. He teleported himself 20 feet into the air and successfully fell to his death. Daniel A. Curlshawk. Daniel conjured himself a magical forest and has not been seen since. D. Zaster. D died in a devastating explosion near a fireplace. His last essay on the development of my fart spell will be passed on to his surviving family. Elmar Frog. Elmar's father, the royal executioner, asked for permission to see his son's school records. Elmar is doing fine, truly. Really fine lad. Hmm, looks as if a few pages were ripped out here. Hiker Granger. Despite repeated warnings, which hiker is still using the school's palentia to make long distance calls? Frederica Sillybottom. Friederica Sillybottom has applied to the city council for a change of name. She shall henceforth be known as Frederica Sillybottom. Ingemar Thunderflash. Despite repeated demands, Ingemar refuses to tell us his real last name. No one is called Thunderflash. Yoda Green Gnome. Magic strong in this one is, but weak his grammar be. Papa the Great. Papa the Great, the only student of this academy whose width exceeds his height, today received his degree. He will be missed. Percy Smith. Percy detonated a stink bomb during running training. The students never ran faster. Student Smith received an award. Peter, troll. The Hunters Guild has asked us to find a new caretaker. It seems the grumpy troll snoring and farting is scaring off the wildlife for miles around. René Beetle. René claims to have been in a sky full of diamonds with a certain Lucy. Visits from females are strictly prohibited in this school. So are mushrooms. Russell the Undead. 
Russell the Undead Mage is constantly losing skin. There have been numerous complaints from the cleaning staff. Sasha Shalislash. This entry was only added to make life difficult for anyone who has to read it out loud. Sorry. Hey, not very nice. Serena Dirkmanser. Serena discovered a completely new kind of magic. A second, completely unrelated incident then destroyed the entire laboratory. Speedster. Document not found. Did you mean speedster or speed star? Hmm. Theragor Biratan. Theragor lost today's archery contest after he fired his arrow in the wrong direction. We sent his family flowers. Toby Corner. Toby Corner. Wise remarks, deficient. Wise cracks, good. Give me another. Excuse me, Headmaster Block. Yes. Why do so many of the notes on your desk have a small hole in the middle? That's airmail. You spike the message on the beak of a homing pigeon. Not an optimal method. First one obviously has a hole in the paper, and secondly, the pigeons are constantly flying into cliffs. Uh, I think it... I think there's a simpler solution. And that would be? You could simply write the letters directly onto the pigeons themselves. As long as the pigeons are white and the ink black, the text should be clearly visible. Hmm, not a bad idea at all. But it would make the archiving more difficult. Records seem to be very important to you. Order is very important. Records are a tool to that end. I have a loose leaf binder for spells. Hmm, commendable. Maybe you can do something with this then. There is no room for a spell in my files. Archive it, Mr. Weathervane. Gladly. So, I'll get back to work then. Be my guest. A spell? Someone has written a note in the margin. Headmaster Pinkerton, his spell is currently circulating throughout the school. It opens tabs, knots, loops and the like. By now, there is hardly a student or teacher in this school who still has their pants around their waists and not their ankles. We need to stop this immediately. <laughs> it seems magic isn't always limited to serious things. The fire maker is an amazing piece of engineering. You fill it with flammable gas, which is then ignited using complicated technology. Bellows. I won't go into details now, but when one pulls the handles apart, they fill with air. Pressing the handles together forces the air out of the tip. Took me a while to figure that out, but I've got the hang of it now. Old boards. They're so dry that they're almost disintegrating. Why work when you... The spell worked excellently. I think I've summoned enough of... I don't think that'll work. The spell opens loops, straps, hooks, and eyes. Things like that. But I can try. As I suspected, there's another spell to open locks. That looks like a lot to me. Whoa, the new caretaker troll. Hello. Um, hello. I'm, I'm Wilbur Weathervane. P Professor Wilbur Weathervane. Yeah. I, uh, I, I teach, so 
I, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. If you were to talk to me, we could work together to accomplish much more for the school. Come on, I demand that you talk to me. Oh, great. Someone else to make demands around here. What are you doing? What does it look like? It looks like you're cleaning the hall. Well, now and then, a little. Yep, it's my job. I'm a janitor. What of it? You been a caretaker for long? What exactly are your duties? I run the place. Oh. Nothing here works without me. Just no one notices, that's all. I see. But don't the teachers and the school administration, etc., have a small share in the success of the school, right? <laughs> what success? You've had a look round this dump. It's disgusting. All dirty and run down. Yes, it's quite dirty here, in fact. But isn't it your job to do something about it? What do you think I'm doing? Ah, could take a while until you're done cleaning up the mess, right? Yeah, if you say so, Mr. Know-it-all. I bet Council Leader Van Buren got you the job here. Of course. She wanted the best. Oh, great. I think she'd be perfectly happy if no progress was ever made here at the school. Know what your problem is? You're a windbag. Bert thinks so too. Who's Bert? Buddy of mine. He thinks you're a windbag too. I don't even know Bert. Even we just met. So you're saying I'm lying? That's exactly what Bert, me and the others hate about you. There is no Bert! You really live in your own little world, you wimbag. Headmaster Block has ordered you and I to clean the hall and free it of cobwebs. Already on it. Um, yeah, but... It doesn't seem to be progressing. Oh, you could of course do it better. Not that, only maybe, maybe you could use some help. Do you have any other cleaning supplies? A broom, dustpan? Sure, got it all. But I ain't giving you none. Get your own. What's your problem? I'm offering you help and saving you a lot of work. Oh, boo-hoo, cry me a river. Look, you were told to clean the entrance hall, I was told to clean the entrance hall. If we work together, it will be faster for both of us. Don't you get it? Sure, Professor Brain should know. The rest of us are idiots. I never said that, but it is a fact. Don't know about anything, but wanna play the big man here, huh? It is quite obvious, that. No one else is allowed an opinion. We had that here before, you know. Rotten fascist. I... Uh, I don't want to fight with you. Your parents are siblings. Yeah, all three of them. Come on, seriously. I could really use your help. Please. Can't cope with your life, huh? And now you want me to fix it for you. Just like always. You've never helped me. We... We, we don't even know each other. Oh, how the fine gentleman considers himself something better now and suddenly doesn't know us anymore. I'm slowly beginning to believe you actually find it funny to wind me up. Everyone hates me because I'm so cool. I'm sure they don't. Yes, they do. People say that I'm arrogant. But how should they know? I wouldn't give them time of day. And you know what beats everything? No. A hammer. Ha <laughs> ha. Idiot. I'm keeping an eye open for a friend. So please let me know if anything unusual happens in the school. <clears throat> well, you know, if for example someone's wandering around the school who has no business here, or if things disappear, or, you know, things like that. 
There was a penny stuck in the door. You what? There was a penny stuck in the door. Wouldn't open. Ah, oh, that's probably not important. Did you put the penny in there? Me? Uh, no. If I find a coin in there, I'm taking you down. It was nice talking to you. I really don't understand why so many people don't want to talk to trolls. Arseholes, the lot of them. They don't want us to speak our minds. And I think that's wrong. That's why I let you. Yeah, but then you run down everything I say. Who made you sheriff here? This school is going downhill and has been for a long time. Ever since you and a few others came here, there's been nothing but stress. Um, hang on a minute. Isn't this your first day? Didn't used to be that way. But now everything has to be politically correct, or you get silenced immediately. Yeah, well, well, goodbye. The door to the magic school actually consists of several doors. One for the large creatures, such as trolls, one for humans and elves and the like. And then there's one for gnomes and dwarves, and one for even smaller beings. That is supposed to symbolize that everyone is welcome in the school, but in reality, graduate majors are almost exclusively human. I'm the first non-human to graduate in many years. Guess that's why my door hinges squeak. I can't leave until I've completed the three tasks and informed the headmaster. I don't want to let the archmage down. Vale, o sea, que ahora tendría que limpiar esto. Those are the cobwebs the headmaster wants me to get rid of. Not only are there a lot of them, they're much too high for me. Nothing. Probably hit a hole. Bueno, pero lo que sí que voy a hacer es grabar por aquí y dejarlo por ahora. Solo, vale. Pues nada, lo dicho. Voy cerrando por aquí. Tal vez haga algo luego más tarde. Venga, si hay alguien por ahí por el chat, lo dicho, nos vemos luego.